everyone, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today we're going to discuss and compare AutoML solutions. So if building the best app with automatic machine learning is your goal, then this is the video for you. So in today's video, we're going to first take a look at the AutoML process end to end. Then we're going to go in app and we're going to compare a few AutoML solutions, namely the Google AutoML Vision, the AWS Recognition Custom Labels, and the Azure Custom Vision. After we compare those apps in app, then we'll take a look at some experiments we've ran at Rebelflow benchmarking these solutions. And after that, we'll give you a quick look at an AutoML solution that we've built here at Rebelflow. So first off, here's an overview of the AutoML process. So in any case, you're gonna end up uh, showing up to AutoML and wanting to use it for computer vision. You're gonna follow a process that looks something more or less like this. So the first step is to first load in images of things that you want to either detect or classify. And then after loading in your images, you'll be adding labels onto these images, which will be your own custom labels to detect your own custom objects or your own custom classes based on the way that you want it to work. After that, you'll use the platform to train a computer vision model, which will be simply adding one click after you have labeled your images. And then after training has completed, You'll be evaluating your model to see if it meets the specifications you need, and then you'll be deploying it um, into either uh, on uh, in the cloud or onto an on-device solution. And after that, you'll be making inference. So then now it will be running live after you've finished all of these automatic machine learning procedures. So now diving in, we'll uh, first take a look at an auto ML solution on uh, Google Cloud. So this is uh, Google Auto ML. Uh, vision here, and um, you can get to it by searching AutoML Vision in your Google Cloud account. So we'll go here, and then you have your dashboard. And um, in my case, you'll see that I have already done some work here, so we'll start to take a look at what the app looks like in AutoML Vision. So here we have a data set. This is uh, the Pascal Vock data set, which is a common uh, object detection data set that has a lot of images. Um, and uh, has, a, has a pretty broad scope. Um, so here you can see we have custom classes. We're trying to detect airplanes and bicycles and birds and, birds and so on. Um, so this is a, a data set that has a plethora of different um, objects, and these are all the things that we're going to be trying to teach the computer to learn from. So you load in your data set, and you can take a look at images and make sure that your labels are right. Um, for this, you will be loading in uh, label data ahead of time. And then uh, the next tab here is to kind of look at training. So we could uh, go here and train a new model with our label data. And you'll see they'll ask us a few settings that we um, want to choose. Um, and you can parse through here based on your task at hand and, and decide exactly what settings you want to uh, set for training. Um, but the one big thing you'll get to choose here is you'll get to set a node hour budget, which basically means that you can choose how long you want the model to train for. And the longer the training, the better it's probably gonna do, but it's gonna cost you more to be booting up all these uh, GPUs on AutoML Vision and then basically incurring those costs as the model is teaching itself. So that's, uh, that's a look at training models in, in, in um, Google Cloud AutoML Vision. And then once your model is done training, um, you'll get some metrics back. So these metrics will tell you how well your model did, and um, you can kind of compare iteration over iteration how you've done. So for example here, this is one that I trained quickly, um, and it only got an average precision of 0.24, whereas here we see an average precision of 0.6, which was a longer training job. So um, you can use this to kind of iterate, add more data, and try to make your models better as you're, as you're evaluating them. Um, now, evaluate is another tab that they have. So this is kind of like a little bit more of an in-depth evaluation uh, area where you can see kind of how things are performing by class. And um, so, for example, we're doing a better job of detecting airplanes than we are at bottles. Um, but you can dive in here to kind of really learn more about the data set and the errors that your, your model is making. Um, and then finally, once you're ready to actually use your model, um, you can uh, deploy it. So this will spin up an instance and put your model there and allow it for uh, your model to be making inferences on the cloud where you can just kind of post images via an API and then get predictions back afterwards. Um, 
And AutoML, uh, Google Cloud AutoML does actually present one other option, which is to um, export your weights onto device. So these, this is another pathway you can take other than the cloud manage difference to get out of the Google Cloud AutoML um, and then start making inference there. So this is a quick tour. Obviously, there's a lot more here, and I'll also be posting an article below uh, that has more details on Google Cloud AutoML. But now, moving forward. So this is another um, AutoML solution. So you'll notice here that uh, things look uh, eerily familiar, but this is uh, over in the AWS land. Um, so this is the AutoML solution called Amazon Recognition. So you can go ahead and just type in recognition with a K into uh, your AWS uh, cloud, and then you can go to use custom labels. And we'll see some projects that I've already started here. Um, so there here is a project um, that I've called Coco, but I'm actually training on Tasco Lock. Um, and so this is a similar uh, instance where you're loading in images through into your S3 bucket, and then you can optionally label those in Amazon with Amazon uh, SageMaker Ground Truth. And then you have a label data set that you can import into recognition for your training. So here we have an example of a training run uh, where we've trained on this data set. Um, we'll, we'll look at the data set first um, here called uh, Pascal Lock. So this is the same data set, just in a different platform. So you'll see here, there are the same things you're trying to detect, like trains and sheep and dogs. I um, mean, you can use this part of the platform to kind of look through your data and make sure that things are labeled correctly. Once you've gotten a feel for the data set, then you go ahead and go here and you click train model. Um, and so you'll get to choose which, which data set you want to train on and which data set you want to run your evaluation metrics on. And then you just click this button down here to uh, kick off training. So uh, unlike the Google Cloud AutoML, you'll be training here for an unknown period of time. Um, and the maximum will be 24 hours. So if your training job times out in 24 hours, then it simply won't finish. But most jobs will uh, finish prior to that. Um, but you kind of un you have an unknown training cost. But the nice thing is, as, and we'll get more into this in the comparison, is that the training costs are a lot lower here uh, than they are in uh, Google Cloud. So looking at projects here, we'll now look at what a finished train job looks like. So in this one, we ran it and um, got an email that it was done. And here you can see some of the metrics. So um, uh, you'll also have an average precision score here and you'll have some metrics broken down by class. So these are all uh, different metrics based on how your model is uh, performing across different classes in your data set. So one thing to know though, is you shouldn't compare these scores directly between platforms because they're calculated slightly differently. Um, but basically uh, one thing that Recog does that uh, Google doesn't is they'll set a uh, threshold, assume threshold to make predictions for you. Um, whereas otherwise Google Cloud is assuming you're just going to kind of set a monolithic threshold for all classes. So that can be useful, um, sort of a small tweak and difference and changes the scores a little bit. Uh, but in the same way as we were looking at evaluation metrics in Google Cloud, you can use this to kind of be uh, evaluating your models and, and seeing uh, how, how well um, they're doing. And then afterwards, um, in order to uh, use this model, you can go down here and um, uh, they'll have the model here and there's API code that you can use to hit it. Um, so in the same way that we we're in Google Cloud, you have to actually like kind of start your model first. So this will deploy it onto a GPU instance um, that will be sitting up there on the cloud ready to take uh, post requests for you. So then you can post request up your images and then get uh, predictions back down in, in a similar fashion. So unlike Google Cloud, though, um, here you're not going to be able to export uh, your train model onto device. It is simply uh, locked in place on uh, AWS recognition. So now the uh, last service that we're going to compare here is the um, Microsoft Azure um, custom vision. So looking in here, um, we'll uh, go ahead and go into the custom vision uh, panel. And you can see here that I have no projects yet, um, but we'll just go ahead and create one called YouTube and we'll tour around here a little bit. Um, and so things are going to look, again, pretty similar. Uh, so the first step here is to add images. 
So you add in your images and you can look and you can edit your annotations and make sure that your data set is the way you want it. And then you can hit a one click button here uh, to run training. The training finishes, you get to a performance tab where you're looking at the performance of your model. And then once you're done, um, you can uh, go from the performance tab to uh, basically publish this to make it ready for inference. So um, here with the Azure platform, uh, things again are running pretty much similarly. It's just kind of a matter of uh, which one you like better for um, both the costs you're going to incur throughout the process and the performance you're seeing that your model is getting. So now we'll dive into some kind of concrete, concrete metrics that uh, we put together to compare these different tools. Um, so this, this can be useful so you don't have to uh, spend your own time benchmarking and comparing these uh, on your own. So here we have a table. Um, there's a few main things to be considering as you're going through this process. So uh, the first one is the training time and the cost. So how long is this going to take to train and how much is it going to cost me to finish it? Um, so we went ahead and uh, did this on the Pascal Lock data set um, as a common uh, benchmark. And kind of here we have some uh, numbers on the way that things uh, shook out. So you can see here that uh, AWS recognition finished in 26 hours. Uh, Google Cloud AutoML finished in uh, 20. So we were trying to actually kind of uh, make comparable budget, but 20 was the lowest that we could train it for. And then Azure for a comparable budget, we were only able to train for an hour. Um, and then we have an open source model here on the bottom, yellow 5X. Um, so you can see here that AWS recognition is probably the cheapest one uh, to train on, um, and then probably GCP, and then Azure is the most expensive. Um, for the, uh, another thing we compared is max size limit. So these are various things that you can uh, kind of cap out on. So none of these could actually train uh, the COCO data set, which is a very large data set, um, which is kind of one of their, uh, one of their limitations. Um, and then we started to look at model performance. So we made a custom benchmark here using uh, MAP um, metric uh, to compare all these, um, which is sort of like a common metric that they can all share. And we saw that recognition did the best. Um, this is not necessarily entirely definitive because uh, we didn't train these ones until their entirety. Um, but uh, it is telling that, you know, for the cost that you can get the best performance uh, out of recognition on this uh, shared data set. Um, but now this is another important thing is we started to look at inference time. So how fast once your model is up there inferring, do you actually get your predictions back from the cloud? So uh, here you can see we're looking at a full two seconds on recognition versus uh, in GCP and Azure, you're getting uh, much faster inference time. So Azure is all the way up to 0.5 seconds, which is really fast. Um, yeah, so that, that is definitely something telling if you want really fast uh, cloud inference in production, uh, Azure is probably the way to go. Uh, and then the last thing to look at is inference cost. So this is really kind of where you're going to accrue the most cost if you find a model that's actually useful um, and end up deploying it into production. So for AWS recognition, per instance, you're going to have um, about $4 per hour to have that instance up. GCP is only 1.82 per hour. And then Azure is just basically a built raw image count. So it's uh, two cents per image. Um, and this is sort of a comparison that you'll have to kind of think about how much you're hitting and starting and stopping your servers. Um, to kind of compare based on inference cost. And based on all these things, you can kind of make a decision on uh, which one you think is best. So at the end of the day, we had some kind of macro, macro recommendations at the end of our research process here, which is basically if you're kind of just a small budget seeking to explore computer vision with AutoML, uh, Amazon recognition is probably gonna be the easiest place to start. Uh, the large budget, um, seeking the best performance would be uh, to use RoboFlow to actually integrate with all three of these. And I'll show you a little bit more on that here at, uh, at the end of the video. Um, and then see just which one gives you the best performance at the end of the day. Because they're all going to be tailored uh, to different domains slightly differently and their models will uh, be running slightly differently in the background. Then if you're looking at a, uh, like a large budget that you're seeking to minimize long-term costs with inference, um, GCP or Azure is probably going to be the best based on your inference workload. 
Um, and then real-time inference, uh, there's kind of two options there to go through uh, GCP custom vision or auto ML, because there you can actually export the weights and then start using those for inference on device rather than sending it up to the cloud for inference. Uh, so now, lastly, I'm going to show you um, a uh, AutoML solution that we built here at Rebelflow and then how to integrate with the other three. Uh, so here is the Rebelflow platform that you can use for data management. So like the others, you can come in here and you can uh, check your data set, check your annotations, make sure that everything is all right. Um, and then once you're satisfied with your data set, um, you can uh, then export the data set. Um, you can make uh, pre-processing augmentations to change the structure of your data set so you can version your data set with different uh, settings that you can use for training which is um, something that's unique among these platforms is that here you can actually be uh, ac actively versioning your data and trying out different experiments and then afterwards um, you can go you can hit uh, just our one-click training solution here um, so here we'll be going into RoboFlow train start training and so this is sort of similar to what you'll be seeing in the other platforms where uh, you have some dialogue that tells you uh, essentially that you'll get an email back when the training process is done. Uh, and then an endpoint will post um, that you'll be able to do um, inference from. So for example, here we have example of using this uh, curl command here to uh, send an image up to the inference server and receive predictions back. Um, and here are some metrics on performance that you also see at the end. Um, but then lastly, um, we definitely don't want uh, things at RoboFlow to be kind of a one track uh, solution. So you can also integrate with the other three um, and take your data set out and bring it into another AutoML solution. So this is really useful so you don't have to figure out how to uh, parse different data structures to get your data in and out of different places. Um, you can kind of use this as a one one central hub to be communicating amongst different services. So um, that's all in our video today for uh, creating AutoML solutions. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video. Thanks so much.